Well, welcome back to my Ford Transit campervan build and my MultiPlus install. So this is going to be part two. Um, last time we looked at the unit itself and sort of the setup for what we're going to be doing with the consumer unit. This episode we're going to be looking at doing the van chassis earth. This intro is actually recorded in the future, so it's, it's actually already done. Um, and how I've installed that and why, as well as doing the electrical hookup point, which is below the van there and wiring up the consumer units and hopefully getting the, the unit switched on for the first time. Right, so position of hookup. I am going to put it probably about here. The reason I'm going to put it there is one, it's blocked by sort of road debris and stuff by the tyre being in the way and that there is a, a access hole and that links to this pillar here. So this whole cavity is empty and that whole cavity translates to this bit of the bodywork here. So effectively the wire is going to run up in there, in there. And then I'm going to have it come out of a hole here, put a gland to protect the cut wire from chafing on the metal. And then up through my little access hatch there, which goes into the electrical cupboard. It's also similar for the, um, the chassis point. I'm going to have the inverter chassis point come out this hole and mount somewhere on here in a space that I can directly see and be able to check in the future just to make sure it's always got a good contact. So let's get on mounting the plug. Right, that's where I want to put it. I think about there. So something I'm doing is I'm putting the point directly in line with my rear, uh, one of my rear light, uh, one of my rear reversing sensors. Not because it, that's important, but mainly just it works as a visual, so I know which part of the bumper to try and plug the cable in without getting up hand, my hands and feet all the time. Right. Get this wired in. Right, so now I can put it back on here. And to keep the cable tight on this, I'm just using the gland. One, it's going to hold the, retain the cable in place. And two, it's also going to offer a waterproof seal. There we go. Nice and sealed. All right. Put the case back on. Put the screw back in. Hopefully never have to open it up again. Put the clippy clippy back on. There we go. Right, let's get us under the van. There we go. Happy with that. Alright, next job. Sorting out all of this. Alright, there's one plug. So I think I'll just put a slit in the rubber. There we go, no chafing. So next I'm going to use another gland, just the other way around like that. So we can have this coming out of there and then running around here up into there. Right, now I'll leave that to dry for 20 minutes. I'm sure lots of people are going to tell me it's completely unnecessary, but um, earth cable should be yellow and green. So I bought some shield in, so my earth cables can be yellow and green. Right, one earth cable sorted. That's probably going to go in a similar area over here. I'll clear a nice little spot, and then it'll be rooted inside the vehicle. Right, as for my earth point, I'm just going to do it here. The main reason here is one, so I can keep an eye on it, I can visually inspect it occasionally. And it's the same cavity as this, so I can actually access the back of it to do the bolt up. So let's do a pilot there. I'm just going to put a locking nut on the back of it as well. Secure earth point done. 
all being well, there should be continuity now anywhere I touch on the chassis. So let's go from there. I'm going to go to the rear door lock. There we go. So one thing I forgot to mention was the thickness of the cable. Uh, I went for 10 mil, which is way over specified. Um, four mil or six mil would have been absolutely fine. Uh, I just went for 10 mil because it was cheaper to buy 10 mil and use the lugs I already had for 10 mil than to buy six mil and buy new more lugs. Um, whilst you will see some people using really thick cable like 50 mil or the same thickness as their um, DC system and I think different inverters can be set up differently in the case of the multi plus there's no continuity between the DC um, aspects of the inverter and its case so there's no need to have an equivalent size on that but different inverters will be different right make up my little consumer board so um, we're gonna have the AC coming in from the shore power going in there it's already got the metal bars came pre-installed at the top out there into inverter and then the inverter is going to come out go into here which is the second RCD it's already got the bars on the top which join them out so it comes out the bottom and then these will get split and go into my circuits so probably one the passenger side and one and the more powerful one for the um, kitchen side so to keep it all nice and snug I'm going to drill some holes in the bottom of the casing and just use glands so I can put them all together and then it nicely secures the wires in place so they're held tight. Right then, actually wiring the unit up. So this board's going to get mounted in the back of that cupboard and then I can start doing the wiring. So I might as well do the easy wiring now and the complicated wiring, well, in the back when it's in situ in the back of the cupboard. Right, well, first off, I need to wire this to here, and then the other end of this is going to be the plug into the inverter itself. So, let's trim off the sheath. Each one of these came with a handy colour coded um, setup. Um, so I've, I've run out of the 2.5mm stuff, which is sort of my main in. So I'm going to use for the AC out um, to the sort of appliance side consumer unit, uh, the 1.5mm stuff. 1.5mm is still rate, rated to 12 amps at like 60 degrees. So, and the breaker in here is, is 10 amp anyway. So, and this inverter wouldn't be able to put out so a 1600 VA inverter. So it wouldn't be able to max out a 1.5 millimeter cable. So I'm gonna use that as well. And the manual says 1.5 is fine. So we're going to go for a 1.5 millimeter. Plus 1.5 millimeters fit a lot better in these plugs than the other type do. So wiring diagram again. Blue into neutral. Live into that one. Uh, just to point out uh, for anyone doing it that the the live and neutral orientation is swapped around on the other plug, so don't just wire them both the same. Right, decided to move this onto a slightly bigger board. You'll see in a moment why. So I wanted to go for having each of these circuits go to just a 13 amp plug socket. It's a bit easy for me to wire and unplug. Um, I'm going to have one socket for the smaller 6 amp and the um, dual socket for the 10 amp version. Right, let's get these boxes mounted. It's probably not a good thing to breathe in, but it's probably like glass fibre reinforced or something. Ah, I forgot to balls. I forgot to do it for the gland. Bollocks. Finished consumer board. So this one goes to this one. This one goes to this one. That's coming from the inverter. And that's coming from AC in or shore power or hookup. And then going into the inverter. Right, time to get this mounted in the back of the cupboard. 
of which you're not going to see because it's back of a cupboard and I can't fit the camera there but I'm going to mount a panel. Right, test fit uh, for where it's going to go, same place as the Phoenix, it's a wee bit bigger, um, there is enough clearance at the bottom, I've just got it chocked up at the minute on some blocks before I actually mount it, enough clearance for the, the battery wires to go. Now I know some people are going to mention you're not meant to have an inverter above the uh, batteries, which is true but it's less important really when they're lithium, the reason for the not being above it was because lead acid batteries when charged can gas and you don't want that going in there so it's a bit of a less issue when you've got lithium batteries. Additionally other people are going to complain that this is not wide enough and yeah but the actual, there's no ventilation on the sides of this it's only through the bottom and out the top and it's, the Phoenix one's about 10 centimeters out the top and there is about that there it's kind of hard to see so I'm going to cable manage those cables out of the way a bit later on uh, but unlike the older um, multi plus or the multi pluses in the metal um, cases they just do have side vents so that's why you would want more um, ventilation at the sides unlike this model with the the plastic body has the the top vent right I'm going to start making up my battery cables so first one I'm going to do the positive and that is going to be going from the positive terminal on the inverter to the fuse box And then just using one of these as my crimper. A hydraulic one would be better, but I don't have a hydraulic one, so. I do find sometimes this one crimps a little bit too easy on some of the bigger lugs, so I just like to downsize the next one down just to give it a bit of a tighter crimp. Test it's not going anywhere. First cable done. Right, next cable. When ordering lugs for a job, I don't order the amount you need, just order like a pack or double in case you get something wrong. Right, one mega fuse done. Right. Next cable, negative, this is going from the negative terminal on the inverter to the load charge terminal on the shunt, that is an M10. Next job, installing these in here. I think I'll flatten them out first. That doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. There is a correct tension you should do these, uh, which it says in the manual. I just don't have a tension wrench to be able to actually do it. So I'm doing up to what feels right. soon. Well, time to get the inverter mounted. I've done a bit of cable management at the top of the cupboard. You can't see any of this because I can't get in otherwise, but let's get the inverter in. So I've got the main DC cables and I've also got that um, so I've got the main DC cables and I've also got the trickle charge cable in. I'm trying to do as many bits as I could now because it's a little bit less convenient to reach after I've got it mounted. As I currently can't see underneath there, I'm using the phone as a screen so I can make sure the earth is in. Right, time to put all the wiring back and then we can, well, try it out, really. 
Time to connect up the last one. This might make a spark just because. All right. All on, made a spark, which is expected. BMV's on. Turn on the rest of the system now. So, converter's in, system's live again. Time to tidy up the van a bit so I can start on the next job. Right, next up, the digital moi control. Right there's probably the obvious bit. Nicely provides with the screws. Well, to be honest, it just seems like I mount that wherever I want it. Next up, I need a cable. So, I'm just going to use a Cat 6 cable for the VE bus. Gonna put some P clips in. Now I've got to route it through my cable channel. Right, next up is to plug the Mark III user interface in. Right, let's uh, get the cables plugged in. So I'm just gonna use the little lock as well. There's no chance the cable's coming out. I think we can turn it on for the first time. Don't actually know which way is on. Towards me. So let's go for it. Now, I think this shouldn't do anything because the controller is overriding it. So we'll just hit the wall one. Got a green light. So I guess. Next, I'm gonna well flip the switch in here. And then maybe these. And then maybe that. Well, no, nothing yet on, I'm not quite sure why. Got it working. Turns out I forgot to press the actual buttons to turn it on, they were in the off position. Currently charging. Well, since it's all set up, I thought we would actually do a, a test as well to show that the RCDs are working. So if I press the test button, it should flip that down. There we go, cut the power. And if I do the same for the AC in, it's currently plugged in, it should, I'll do the same. Cut the power for both of them. And then it will, when it sorts out the internal relay, that will flick on in a second. Cool, so RCDs work, and it's always good to test them periodically as well. So that's good, pretty much going to end part two of the Monty Plus install video. Um, we've got the chassis uh, earth, we've got the consumer unit board built and wired up and installed, uh, the, the electrical hookup points in, uh, that's, we've got the inverter running. So next episode, I'm going to look at sort of the setting up of the inverter in the software, as well as playing around with the trickle charge feature and also the Monty Plus getting that to work in the VRM as well. So thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, feel free to message me over Instagram. Uh, leave comments below, and I'm sure since I've talked about 240 volt uh, AC and earthing to the vehicle's chassis, people are going to have some colourful things to say. Good or bad comments, they still help the videos out. So, um, yeah, once well, again, thank you very much. Uh, see you next time, and yeah, like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it. Other things to say? I don't know. I forget. Cheers. Bye.